Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Father in heaven, we thank you for another beautiful day, and we thank you that uh, you are such a beautiful Lord, Lord, that you love us so much. Lord, now we pray that you use Pastor Izzy to open up the word, Lord, that we can, we can get real meat for our soul, Lord, real meat for our mind, Lord, and empower us for this coming week, Lord, whatever challenges, whatever appointments you have, you'd go before us, Lord, and prepare the way. We ask that now in Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. All right, guys, would you turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 3? Actually, the last couple of verses of chapter 2 where we'll pick up uh, just where we left off. We, got to the, we left one verse hanging at the end of chapter 2 when we were last time we were here. And some people ask me, why do you recap what you did before? But, I, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I, it was, well, since Aaron taught for us last week while we were on our 31st anniversary vacation, um, that's two weeks have gone by. But even one week I found that even on television shows that air once a week, they always go, last time, you know, and they give a little recap of the previous show and then lead you into the show. Why do they do that? Because you forget. The reality is we have busy weeks and we need sometimes just to get our mind back to where we were at. So I want to bring you back to where we were at this morning where we saw some really, I mean, these are really profound words of Paul. At the end of chapter 2, he says this saying that it, he uses the word appraise, okay, appraise or um, discern is the King James uses it in, in some spots in this translation. But let me read it to you, starting at verse 14 of 1 Corinthians 2. He says, But the natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God. For it says, For they are foolishness to him. For he cannot understand them, because they are spiritually appraised or discerned. And he says, and, But he who is spiritual appraises or discerns all things. Yet he himself is appraised by no one, for who has known the mind of the Lord that he will instruct him? In other words, instruct the Lord. But we have the mind of Christ. Now this is something that when you become a Christian, you, God gives you a new mind. He, ha he gives you the mind of Christ. It's a, your, your whole outlook changes radically. When you know Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man opens the door, I will come in and sup with him. I will, you know, Jesus said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll be with you to the end of the age. And knowing that the Lord is with you, man, it really helps. I don't know about you guys, but for me, that was probably the single most life-impacting thing to, to change my outlook. Before, I thought I was on my own. You know, I had to do it all myself, rely on myself, make myself be able to do whatever, you know, obstacle I was facing to, to get over that hurdle. And I didn't have the mind of Christ that Christ was with me, and he's, he would be with me no matter if I fell down, to help me get back up, to brush me off, to, to get me through all of the problems of life. And when we talk about spiritual things to someone who doesn't have that spirit of Christ, ha have you noticed that it's, what Paul's saying here is the natural man does not accept the things of the spirit. Can anyone give an amen to that? Amen. You, you talk to some of your friends, they don't have the mind of Christ, and they're just looking at you like you're from Mars. You know, you could just as soon be speaking a foreign language that they don't know because they just look at you like, huh? What are you, what are you talking about? And if you've experienced this, you know, these words are truly true. But, but we forget these words are in the Bible. That these were written so that, I mean, why did he have to write this to this, car, this church that was in a, what we call sin city of the day? You know, they were in Corinth, this, this terrible place to be. And yet they were placed there by God as a light in a really dark spiritual place. And yet Paul has to remind them that when you speak spiritual things to someone who's not in the spirit, don't, we should just put big disclaimer right all around the edge of this, verse 14. Don't be surprised when they don't accept it. Because we're surprised. Christians are weird. They call up, Pastor, I was sharing with my brother and my sister and they just thought I was crazy. I was from Mars believing this stuff of the spirit and and I'm like, that's because they're not in the Spirit. And you should not be surprised. You, it says right here, the natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God. 
So, you know, sometimes I, I've shared sermons and people at the end, of, people come up and go, man, Pastor, that was so right on. I just, that was what I needed to hear. Thank you so much. And the fellow next to him will go, I didn't get a thing out of it. <laughs> now, the message wasn't any different, but the ears hearing or the ability of those ears to hear was. And it just comes down to one thing. If they're in the Spirit, do they have the mind of Christ? When you have the mind of Christ and you hear spiritual things, notice it says here, the one who is spiritual, verse 15, he who is spiritual, he discerns or appraises all things. Your ability to discern things, whether they're of the Lord or not of the Lord, or hey, that's a bad thing to do, that's a good thing to do, to see value. Now, I like that it uses the word appraise because it's actually closer to the Greek word. It's not just to be able to tell whether doing something is good for you or bad for you, but it's actually seeing the value in doing something good or doing something bad. It's one thing to be able to say, yeah, I know it would be good if I did that, Pastor. I know it would be good if I ate better and I exercised a little. And, you know, I, I see you try to do that, but, um, you know, do you know how many people tell me, I know, you, I know I should. I know I should. See, I don't ever want to be the one that says to my kids, uh, do as I say, not as I do. I want to lead by example. And to do that, you have, to, you have to, it's not only knowing what is good to do, it's actually seeing some value in doing it. You have to actually see, is there value? Because, guys, being in the ministry, for me, this is 35 years of ministry, full time. I've been, this has been my calling since my youth. And, and the, the truth is that a lot of my contemporaries, if you look at what the ministry has done to them physically, you know, they, they are not what you call the specimens of this world in, in, the, in the fine fitness sense of the thing. You know, they're, they're, they're preaching about having godly discipline, but they don't have enough physical discipline to push away from the table. When it, uh, they, 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 they get mad at me. They, they say, well, the scripture says buffet your body. No, buffet it. No, it's buffet, not buffet. Buffet is, you know, <laughs> the French way of saying, <laughs> you know, buffet is beat it into submission that it doesn't rule you by its appetites. Completely different. It's spelled the same, I know. But it has a completely different meaning. And the scripture actually uses the one, not the buffet one. The other one. Make your body be in submission to, to, to that thing, that mind of Christ that says, you know, I, and by the way, I, I know that, you know, working out and taking care of your physical body, Paul says it only has a little discipline. Little as in, it has a little time that it will profit you, the time that you're down here. He said godly discipline has great profit, great gain, because it doesn't just profit you while you're down here. It profits you into eternity. So in perspective, which is more important? Godly discipline, right? Spiritual discipline. But physical discipline shouldn't be just dismissed as, well, I don't, I don't even need to do that because I'm a Christian and that doesn't matter. Because I, I know that there are a lot of folks that go, I can't listen to that pastor over there if he's telling me to have these godly disciplines and, and to them, in their mindset, physical discipline is much lower in the, you know, in the scale of importance. It's, just, it's a, so just a shadow of the real important stuff up here, the godly discipline. And they're like, if they can't, they're telling me to do this, but they can't do this. You know, since we're in Kona with the Ironmen and all the healthy you know, mindset that's around here all the time, they, they, I have a lot of Ironmen come up to me and go, well, I'll listen to you because you look like you at least work out a little. You know? <laughs> I'm like, well, I'm going to have to work out a little more, I guess. I mean, I worked on it. I, I, I gained one pound on my cruise. <laughs> and, I, and I lost about another inch off of here, which I'm very happy about. That's like, all the pants are like, woo. I'm like, yeah, Janet worked. Got to get the belt loop another notch tighter. Is it, it's, a, it's a good, <laughs> need another cruise, she said. Oh, I told Janet, if I can, don't tempt us, she said. <laughs> my wife just said, don't tempt us. When, when we were on the cruise, I told the cruise director, I said, listen, last year when we went on our 30th anniversary, I, lost, I gained one pound, and I lost a good two inches, inch and a half, two inches off my waist. And he looked at me surprised, because everyone comes on the cruises, and they have a joke that they gain like seven to 15 pounds in one week. 
and it's not off of this part. And, and, uh, and so I was like, well, I gained one pound, and I lost an inch and a half. And he just looked at me like, how'd you do that? I said, well, I'm trying to do it again. And I explained to him, I'm eating small meals every couple hours and keep my blood sugar even. And, and I'm, you know, we have a no elevator rule except when Jan's in high heels for, you know, the, 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 the fancy night, you know, when you dress up. And, and, and even then, she's like, we don't need to use the elevator. There's like a big line. We'll just go up the stairs. And, um, and so we get in better shape. We have fun. It's like, let's have fun, let's eat right. And, and see, I don't feel any guilt doing it because my wife doesn't have to clean up the dishes. She doesn't have to cook. And I mean, I'm like having steak for one meal and fish for the next and another salad and steak and salmon. And, you know, I'm like, I could eat like a real clean bodybuilding diet with no strain on her. And, and the hotel director is looking at me like, you did that? I said, yeah. In fact, if I can pull it off one more time, I'm going to start offering tours <laughs> where I say, kickstart your, your, your healthy lifestyle with me and let's go for a cruise and I'll show you how to use the ship to, to cook all the food for you. Because they do it all. It's done already. It's just picking the right stuff, you know, and having some and making it fun. We had a blast. And I go, Lord, you're so kind. Now, but what I'm sharing with you, I see value in doing that. Okay. I see a profit in eating a, a healthy lifestyle, living a healthy lifestyle, because I look at my contemporaries, my fellow pastors in other you know, fellowships, and they're suffering. They've got, they've got high blood pressure. They've suffered heart attacks. You know, Pastor Tex suffered a heart attack. And, uh, and he, he literally, he was overweight. And, you know, it, Hawaiian culture, that was kind of acceptable. But when he was, you know, what was he, 45? And he had a heart attack, and he went, that's it. And he started pushing away from the table, started working out. And the other guy started teasing, oh, you're going to be like Izzy now. Yeah. And he's like, yeah. You know, and you look at him today. He's dropped a lot of pounds. He's running marathons. And, and you know, he's like, I just don't want to, you know, I want to be here for my grandkids. I wanna, and I want to be able to do something with them instead of feeling crummy when, when they want to play. And, and, and I respect that. I think that that's, now I see value in it myself. So this is the reason I'm telling you this is because this is the word here when he says he appraises all things. In other words, you see the value, not just, yeah, it's good, or it would be good for me to do it, but you actually recognize there's a real value. You know, when you make an appraisal of a house, you're trying to figure out what's its value, how much is it worth? How much is it worth to take care of ourselves? You know, to feel good. I know for me, I feel so much better and alive and appreciate the day just if I get to do this silly little discipline of eating small meals every couple hours because I, I feel like I have more energy. I don't go up and down. Like if I eat big meals and I, believe me, raised Italian, I know how to do that. Okay, <laughs> big meals. Like, I mean, so much. You put away so many plates, three, four, five helpings, nonna's pasta and gnocchi and and lasagna and everything. I mean, and you like can't even move. Has anyone ever done this? No, no. Okay, you don't. You won't appreciate this at all. But for those of you that have ever done this, where you've eaten to where you cannot even, like, I can't move. I hurt so bad. I am stuck. Now it's kind of fun to do once or twice in your life, but <laughs> it's just for the. I did it. I don't need the T-shirt. I'm never doing it again. It hurt too bad. I mean. Like, you figure out that, what was the value of that? You know, it really didn't make me feel better. But if I took that same food and spread it out through the day, I got to, I'd be able to enjoy all the flavor, but I wouldn't have that, oh, I can't move feel. And I'd feel, for me, I found out I feel like, some people say, well, you're like the Energizer Bunny. You know, you just keep going and go. You know why I keep going is because I keep fueling up. You can't do it if you don't keep putting the fuel. Now, I'm only telling you, this is a spiritual, I mean, a physical discipline down here on this plane. And up here is a godly discipline. This is a shadow of this truth. So if I need to eat regularly to feed this physical body, what do I need to do to feed my spiritual body? I need a regular discipline of eating, a regular discipline of exercise. Spirit, see, Paul will use these very terms exercise your spiritual gifts that you have been given by the Holy Ghost. You know, some of you have gifts. 
But some of you are like those people that buy the gym equipment. You know, the really good stuff. And then you go to their house and you're like, have you ever used this? It looks brand new. I, I mean, there's still the little sticker on the pull tab here. You know, you're supposed to move this thing. And you're pretty sure they haven't ever, they got that, but they got the fanciest gym and you're like, it doesn't do any good. And, and by the way, the only reason I use these examples because people, they can identify. They know people that have bought the gym equipment and not used it. Or they used it for a week or two. The, the bummer is that spiritually, when it comes to spiritual gifts, there's a lot of Christians. They, in the first few weeks that they get a gift from God, they are so excited. They get it out of the package. They use it a couple times. And then it's like the gym. They stop using it. And Paul would be the guy to exhort them, don't you dare. You didn't get the gym equipment to stop using it, and you didn't get those spiritual gifts so you would stop using them. They're for a purpose. And when you exercise your spiritual gifts, who gets the benefit? You do. Yeah. I mean, yes, the person that you're serving with your gift gets a benefit, and you get a benefit because it strengthens you spiritually. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com, and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless.